B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. Malaysian Business Chamber of Commerce organized an event dedicated to the trust regulations in Cambodia with the support of Cambodian Trust Regulator and the Embassy of Malaysia. During the event, we heard the insights from the trust regulators of Cambodia. As foreign investors, we want to make the most for the opportunity that Cambodia has to offer. And this seminar, ladies and gentlemen, is the key to unlocking the trust regulation landscape that to let us understand, to ensure that our investments are protected and our legacy preserved for generations to come. As the Cambodian government plays high importance of the potential investment in terms of trust that can be the main revenue source for the country, it is high, highly time for this in initiative to be taken to a different level. The ideas have been further accelerated through the establishment of the trust regulators through the Non-Bank Financial Service Authority. I, have, I have, was made to understand that the authority would pave the way for a more comprehensive non-bank financial sectors development policies and strategies. What we want to know is to have engagement and to understand more uh, on this particular investment, especially for foreigners like Malaysia to come into Cambodia. I believe this is a good platform for us to discuss and have exchange views and have question and answer for all of us to have clearer and clearer picture on what is going to happen in the near future. I would like to emphasize that the use of trust system is an important step toward a better and more effective management of investment asset ownership in Cambodia, which is foreseen to increase the cash flow from the offshore and foreign, in, uh, foreign direct investment to the Kingdom of Cambodia, increase local investment, which is the source of tax revenue, boost financial diversification, and monitor and manage capital flow in Cambodia by formalizing the use of trust fund for social, public, commercial, and individual purpose. I will show you all about the law and regulation in trust sector, which are ineffective currently. We have fundament, two fundamental law, which is one uh, law on trust that adopted in 2019, law on the organization and functioning of the FSA, non-bank financial services. And we have sub-degree. We have uh, four fundamental sub-degree. Uh, sub-degree on uniform, insignia, and signal ring of the trust inspect inspector. Sub-degree on the organization and functioning of line entity of the FSA. We have Praka on modality and procedure of the trust inspect inspection that allow us to conduct the on-site and off-site supervision on the licensing uh, operator. We have a Praka on supervisory rule on trust organization and functioning. This Praka is very important. Uh, this Praka allow the trustee, trust operator to uh, obtain the license from the trust regulator. I would like to show the main role of the trust regulator. We have, I can separate uh, two main roles, regulate and supervise uh, function and sector, trust sector development function. For the reg supervision function, we have uh, the authority to grant the license, approval and accreditation too trust registration, registration of the trust operator, as well as we can call trust market now because uh, we have a full function of, the, of uh, a trust market to conduct all kinds of trust in Cambodia. We license and approving the trustee and trust operator, who, uh, the trust operator who safeguard keeping like retention service, escrow services, and custody services. We supervise and monitor the law implement of the licensing approval, approval person under the trust regulator. 
we have a function of law enforcement. As a police officer, a judicial police officer power, I can say how many trust uh, instruments which they are approved to operate in Cambodia. We have these four fundamental type of trust, including financial trust is a public trust. We have provided license to trust company, seven of them. And also we provide license, we provide license to commercial bank as well to operate, uh, to provide retention or escrow services in trust sector. And also we provide license to independent individual trustee. And we also have a valuation company in trust sector. We provide accreditation to four asset value. You can look at this chart. Trust establishment request, trust establishment, trust registration, and when it comes to an end, it trusts dissolution. So let's move to the trust process. How trust works in Cambodia. So first, settler or funder, they need to think what kind of trust I should create. They also need to choose trustee licensed by the trust regulator. If without license, it is illegal. So let's say everything is completed. You also sign your agreement and the trustee on behalf of the settler need to file or submit those documents to the TR. For what? For trust registration approval. And TR team review all the relevant documents, whether it is sufficient, but if it's not enough, and then our team will require more to make sure the fund is 100%, 100% a complete transfer, something like that. And this is our trust certificate that we issue to the trustee and also to, uh, to our trustee. And what we have here in the trust certificate, we have the name of the trust. We also put type of trust. When you look at the trust certificate, you know the name, you know the type of trust, let's say commercial trust. And we also have trust um, registration code. Registration code, I think maybe in the future, as the digitalization more developed, we may create QR code. And also the validity of the certificate. From these uh, two charts, on the right, on the on the left chart is a representative number of trust has been registered with the trust regulator, and then on the right chart is represent the uh, you know the trust value in terms of uh, absolute term million and also percentage, and then uh, from there uh, we can uh, uh, you know learn clearly that you know the the right trends of commerce or trust I think over just twelve months has been uh, gone double right. And commercial trust accounted close to 70% already. And the most common, I think, trust asset mainly immovable property, lands, house. So this is way of the investor that, you know, like to uh, give away their, you know, their, their, their investments. One set of trust is very important. Uh, we need to understand what is the objective why we want to set up the trust, why we want to engage the trust with the trust company. So this is some, uh, some objectives that we have to be encountered. Uh, so uh, we, uh, you can see from the slides. And then there are some trustee role, because tr trustee, I think, will perform some legal obligation role for, for, for you, for the truster. And then trustee will look in your asset, you know, with care and due diligence. Uh, fourth, I think we as the trust company, we, we need to have the regular engagement, you know, with different stakeholders, include our regulator, include with truster, and also, also include the beneficiary as well. We need to make sure that uh, we are in the same loop. And 
last point when we set up a trust, I think always avoid risks and dangers and uh, end that trap as well. So that's why we have the diligence uh, to be in place to make sure this uh, taken properly.